This morning as we partake of the Lord's Supper, I want to take us back to Deuteronomy chapter 16. <clears throat> Moses is giving instruction to a se second generation of Israelites as they are about to enter the Promised Land. In chapter 16, he's teaching them how they're to keep the Passover every year at the place which the Lord shall choose. Follow along as I read Deuteronomy 16, the first three verses. Observe the month Abib and celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God. For in the month Abib, the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt by night. You shall sacrifice the Passover to the Lord your God from the flock and the herd in the place where the Lord chooses to establish his name. You shall not eat unleavened bread with it, or leavened bread with it. Seven days you shall eat it with unleavened bread, the bread of affliction, for you came out of the land of Egypt in haste, so that you may remember all the days of your life, the day that you came out of the land of Egypt. God wants his people to remember what he did for them when he redeemed them. How he rescued them out of Egypt with, from, with a powerful hand from the bitter slavery in Egypt. As they ate the Paschal lamb with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, it would remind them of the last meal that they had before they left the land of Egypt. They had taken some of the blood of the lamb and put it on doorposts and the lintels of their homes so that when the Lord came at midnight to kill the firstborn in Egypt, he would pass over the houses of the Israelites. After the Israelites entered the land of, Egypt, of Canaan, they uh, would make an annual trek to Jerusalem to celebrate the pe feast of the Passover. This would be the occasion for them to teach their children the meaning of the feast, that God redeemed them from his people to be his own. He gave them their law so that they would love him and obey him. Jesus was born in Israel at the time that the Jewish people were making annual treks to Jerusalem. Each year, he would go with Mary and Joseph to keep the Passover there in Jerusalem. When he began his ministry, he, be he continued this practice with his disciples of holding the, celebrating the Passover. The last Passover that he ate was the night before he was crucified. The Jewish leaders desired to put Jesus to death, but not during the Passover, lest there be a riot. However, Jesus said, you know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man is to be handed over for crucifixion. And Judas, under the influence of Satan, was instrumental in having him arrested so that he would die at the time that Jesus predicted it would occur. During the Passover meal, Jesus took two of the elements of the Passover and instituted a new ordinance for his followers to keep. He took the bread, the unleavened bread, and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. This ordinance is to be practiced by Jesus' followers until he returns. The bread and the cup are graphic reminders of what Jesus did on the cross. His one-time sacrifice completely satisfied the wrath of God against all the sins of those who would believe on his son. His suffering reminds us of how contemptible our sins are. We remember that Jesus, the sinless son of God, was treated as a sinner in our place so that God could count us righteous through faith in his son. We're saved by grace through faith, not by what we do. Remembering the death of Jesus also has practical implications. It's a time for self-examination and turning from sin. Jesus came into the world to save us, his people, from their sin. 1 Corinthians 5, Paul uses terminology of the Passover to speak of the purity of the church and to admonish church members to holy living. He refers to leaven, which was not to be found in Jewish homes during that week of Passover unleavened bread. 
as though it were an evil influence that might influence the church. So he tells them to clean out the old leaven. He refers, uh, he says, clean out the old leaven that you may be a new lump. And then he says, you are a new lump. And why were they a new lump? Because Christ, their Passover, had been sacrificed. The death of Jesus is the reason for the church to, to be kept pure. It is also the reason that we should come before the Lord with pure hearts. As Paul says, let us celebrate the feast with the, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and, and truth. As we move on to the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, we find that the Corinthians' failure to properly keep the Lord's Supper resulted in the Lord's discipline. Some of the Corinthian Christians were weak and sickly, and some of them had died because of this. So the Lord's Supper is to a serious reflection on the death of the Lord Jesus for our sins. It's a time to worship the one who loved us and gave himself for us. It is also a time to confess any sin which comes to light during our self-examination. If you are here this morning and you know that you have not repented of sin and believed in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation, we ask that you refrain from partaking of the Lord's Supper. It's a celebration for those who have been freed from sin's power. But please consider this, that apart from Christ, you are still in bondage to sin and the wrath of God abides on you. Christ is the only remedy for your situation. God has no other way to save you. And if you would like to speak with somebody, an elder or a member of the church who would be able to help you to understand and come to this salvation, please do so. Men, come forward to service, and whenever you have examined your heart, you may partake.